Thank you, choir, for the precious praise. I believe it was glory to God and great grace to all the saints. In order to come to church, the moment that you came out of your house and every moment when you leave for church or for your work, please believe that that is walking with God like Enoch, and in all things, God will be pleased with you. Based on Matthew 24, verses 32 to 51 that our presiding pastor has read for us, I'd like to share grace through a message entitled, Saints Who Prepare Properly for the End Times. Saints Who Prepare Properly for the End Times. This is based on founding pastor's message from 2009. And in his title, he uh, said in parentheses, the type of the end time saints. Matthew 24 is the chapter of the end times. And among the contents of Matthew 24, today's scripture reading, verses 32 through 51, can be categorized into three uh, paragraphs. First, the, um, Matthew 24, verses 32 to 35, contains the lesson of the fig tree. And from Matthew 24, verses 36 to 44, is about the time when Jesus returns. And lastly, verses 45 through 51 is regarding the faithful slave and the unfaithful slave. We can um, categorize into three parts. And this word regarding the end times have been revealed to the entire mankind. It is a clear truth. And this is a truth that is common to the nature and also to all the creatures. And there is a beginning and, to, and an end to all of uh, creation. There's a time for birth and a time for death, according to the Bible. The end times that the people experience refers to the day that we die. And we call that personal end time. And another end time is the end time that comes upon the entire creation. And we call that the universal end time. Jesus, the personal end time and the universal end time, and moreover, the end when Jesus will come again Jesus is telling us to prepare for those times. Now, there are three saints in re regard to this manner. First, there are saints who only focus on the present reality. And that would be like the saints that are like the church in Laodicea. Revelation 3, verses 15 through 16 says, I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. The problem of the church in Laodicea was that they were neither cold nor hot. If we are neither cold nor hot, lukewarm in terms of our faith, without hope, if we don't have firm faith, God describes us as uh, gross, disgusting. Laodicea was in the city where there was very much uh, material wealth. And as a result, they regarded money as the most important. And the standard of their happiness was also money. This church boasted of material wealth. They comforted themselves thinking that they lack nothing. In Revelation 3, verse 17 and 18, it says, Because you say, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Now, 
the outcome of those people who only boasted of material wealth was pitiful. They had zero interest in the spiritual world. Are we living in the end times? Are we in times of war or a ceasefire? They were just living a life that was idle. Why were they not interested in the spiritual world? It was because they did not lack in their、um, eating and clothing and their life. They had no、uh, joy regarding their salvation. Regarding their eternal salvation in heaven, they had no anticipation for that. So, in their thoughts, like Revelation three seventeen that we read, they thought, "I have need of nothing. I don't lack anything in this world." Those who live like this, doing everything that they want to do, how much would they look towards the kingdom of God? If you're really rich, you wouldn't even feel that this world is difficult to live in. But you would not have the heart thinking, "Oh, I wish this hard, difficult world will come to an end soon, and the second coming Lord would come." But you would only be focused on how much more wealth I can accrue and how I can enjoy life. So they're not interested in the spiritual world. And just like today's scripture reading, Matthew twenty-four, thirty-seven and thirty-eight, it's like in the days of Noah, how people regarded as、um, marrying as the entire importance of their lives. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. That was everything for them. Those who only focus on the present reality. Just like we read in Revelation three seventeen, that is a wretched life, a miserable life, poor and blind, not even knowing that they're blind. And the Bible clearly says that they will live a shameful life that is like naked. These people who are only focused on pleasure and joy, there are saints even like that in today's church as well. The second type of saints are the saints who try to escape from reality. They are like the saints that were in the church in Thessal、uh, Thessalonica. The church in Thessalonica actually was very spiritually revived. It was a very fervent church. Like it says in First Thessalonians one verses six and seven. They, through,、um, they have received、um, the word in much tribulation, and they have become an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. First Thessalonians one verses six and seven reads: You also became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. However, not all the saints in the church of Thessalonica was like this. Among them, some of them were only focused in the second coming of the Lord, and they were so anxious about it. That, according to founding pastors' expression, there were some who were、uh, so nervous, oversensitive regarding the second coming, and they thought there's no need to live anxiously regarding the present world. All we have to do is pray and live a life of grace. There was such sentiment among some of them. They liked to predict the future. And they only wanted to hear sermons regarding、uh, prophetic sermons, so they thought of this world as sinful. They neglected this world, and they brought chaos to the family and chaos to the church. And there was a mismatch or disharmony among reality、um, 
and their ideal so they were rebuked in second Thessalonians 3 verse 11 it says that uh, they were they were people who do no work at all but act like busybodies also in second Thessalonians 3 6 he said now we command you brethren in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you keep away from every brother who leads an unruly life and not according to the tradition which you receive from us 2 Thessalonians 3.10 says, If anyone is not willing to work, then he is not to eat either. And also in 2 Thessalonians 3.14, he says, Take special note of that person and do not associate with him, so that he will be put to shame. The modern church, although there may not be many of them, there are saints like this today as well. The last final type of saint is, are the saints who prepare on the alert and are faithful. There are the saints that are like the church in Smyrna. Revelation 2, verses 8 through 11, although it's long, I will read. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, the first and the last who was dead and has come to life says this, I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich and the blasphemy by those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison so that you will be tested and you will have tribulation for ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. The church in Smyrna, due to the persecutors, were oppressed, and they were actually even threatened um, to death. But the important thing is that they were abundant spiritually. They were faithful without deceit or lies. And they still had even more difficulty coming up. Please believe that they were in a situation just like what our Pyongyang church is facing. What did Jesus say to them? In Revelation 2.10, he said, do not fear what you are about to suffer. You'll have tribulation for 10 days, but be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. In other words, if you're faithful, um, only those who are faithful will be given eternal life. It is a very fearful word. Like this, the church in Smyrna were saints who were faithful until death. So founding pastor said, that the basic posture of the saints of Smyrna who were at the brink of death was faithfulness. Please believe that our basic posture must also be faithfulness, not just any kind of faithfulness, but until death. That faithfulness was so hard that they thought they would die soon. It was one with a spiritual fear. That is the type of being faithful until death. What is the faithfulness until death that we can do now? Even if it's hard to give worship, the moment we come and worship, even if we want to miss out just one day today, but if we have the heart thinking, if I don't go to worship today, I will not be saved. When you have that kind of desperation, please believe that God sees that as faithfulness until death. As believers, this kind of faithfulness, as children of Father, this kind of faithfulness is our correct posture and proper relationship. There are three. A proper relationship with God. A proper relationship with God is only faith. Faith. 
faith is not only done through our lips. Faith shows through our actions with our body. And that is true faith. Abraham, not just in his heart, but he actually took action by offering his only son, Isaac. And only then God said, I now know that you fear me. His faith was acknowledged. If we say that we believe, we must show our actions as believers. When we have that kind of true faith, we're able to have a proper relationship with God. And how do we get faith? Romans 10, 17. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. We are living in a world where we cannot survive without faith. And without faith, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. We know that very well. Yet, if we miss out in the places where we hear the word, I don't know what kind of principle that is. There are saints who really cannot come out to church due to certain circumstances. But except for those saints, we must never miss out in the places of worship. If we look in 3 John 1 verse 2, it says you may, that you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. How can your soul prosper? when we hear the word of God, we form faith. And when we are faithful to God without any deceit, our souls are bound to prosper. If we don't strive for our soul to be prosper, and we just want to prosper in the world, you want your husband to be prosperous, your children to be well off, You hope that they will all just go to a good school and find a good job and find good spouses on their own. Please believe and remember that your soul must first prosper for everything else in the world to go well. Founding pastor, when he gave us this message, said this, even if my body is, my body must ache and my body must be tired for faith to be formed. It's not just me who heard this, but he publicly revealed this on the pulpit. So when we recover worship, I believe that our relationship with God will also be recovered, and we will have a proper relationship with him. Second is a proper relationship with God. This is love. Love in regards to the proper relationship with people is the love that our Creator has shown us. Sacrifice and the love that Jesus showed that overcomes all things, sacrificing all things, God desires for us to have that kind of love as well. Love, when you just say the words, that's not true love, right? You do need to express your love through your words. However, love also needs to be shown through your actions. If someone says he's thirsty, you give him water. If someone says she's hungry, you need to give her water or bread. If they need something, you have to give it to them, but without complaint or grumbling, but with a joyful heart, with a heart of thanksgiving. When you treat others like that, that is love. You heard this a lot from founding pastor. He said, when you love somebody, even if someone has a uh, um, face covered with, uh, he has a zit face, they look like uh, dimples. The love that you felt when you first met father, do we still have that love? We need to reflect on ourselves about that. In the past, Uh, for Miss Pa Choir, there was a time when he told everyone to cut their hair short. For women, they had to show their ears. They all needed to have bobbed hair. 
if on Saturday he said everybody cut their hair, then they all did until evening. They had no earrings. But today, if we were told to um, get your hair cut short, you would just quit the choir, right? But that's how much we obeyed the word in the past. When you're healthy, um, sweep when you're healthy. Live a good life of worship. Pray. Read the Bible. We heard that so many times, but now I believe it is time to carry that out with our actions. Like John 13:34, Jesus said, "A new commandment I give to you: that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another." This is difficult. The love that Jesus showed us until he bore the cross, it's the love that he showed with his body. This is how much I love you. That is the love that he showed us on the cross. We need to have that love so that our relationship with Jesus, our relationship with God, Father, and our relationship with people can be proper. Last is a proper relationship with material things. This includes everything related to the things that we do for our livelihood on this earth. And this is shown through uh, the mission that is given to the believers. Matthew 24, Jesus gives us a lesson through the times of Noah. Verse 37, for the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. Noah who received a revelation in the end times In order to prepare for the end by the flood, he prepared the ark. So he saved his household. That's in Hebrews 11, 7. Also in Matthew 24, verse 40, when until Jesus returns, the saints, the believers, uh, will, will be working in the field. So whether they are believers or not, They all work together in this world. In today's scripture reading, there were two women grinding the same mill. In verse 41, two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. However, what's important is that these two had totally different purposes in life. They received the same life. They received the same time, same place. They received the same abilities. They received the same fields. And they were working with the same kind of mill. The problem is that their purpose of survival and the meaning of their existence were totally different. Coming to church, giving worship, giving offering, serving the church. The outward life of faith were different or were the same. 2 Timothy 3, verse 5 says, Holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power, avoid such men at these. This verse, according to the New Living Translation, renders it as the following. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. These two women, their hearts, the contents of their inner beings, their purpose inside were different. And as founding pastor gave this message, he said, there are saints who work self-centeredly. And on the other hand, there are saints who work God-centered. So according to what they were centered on as they worked, it brought about two contrasting results. As a result, one person was taken and one person was left behind. Beloved saints, regarding the personal end times and the universal end times, Jesus gave a clear message. The history of each person does not stop and continually progresses on. And as such, 
people will be like in the times of Noah, where in the end times they are just living mindlessly. And Jesus is rebuking that. Every single person will come upon the end times, whether it be a personal end time or a universal end time. Hebrews 9.27 says, And inasmuch as it is appointed for men to die once, and after this comes judgment. If there is no judgment, we have nothing to fear. But there will be a time where we must turn left or right. Yet, if we don't prepare for the end times, just focused on the present life, not interested in the internal life, and just giving in marriage and marrying in and building houses, we must not be focused on all, only on those works. The reality that's been given to us and the will that the Lord has given to us, please remember that we must fully carry out both of them. The things of this world and the things of the word, we must um, carry them out both. We cannot uh, just neglect one or the other. We need to um, keep our faith until the end, and that's why it's hard. But we need to carry out that difficult work. Please believe that is how we will reach the final destination called salvation. Now I will conclude. God has a final request to the saints of the end times. Luke 12, verses 39 and 40, as well as Mark 13, 35. God says to you and I, whom he loves, he says, be on the alert and ready. Luke 21, 36 says, but keep on the alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. There are so many words in the Bible that says, keep on the alert, be awake. Why are there so many? Because we need to be awake. No matter what kind of hardship we may face, we need to prepare those times by prayer. And to those people, even if great sufferings or difficulties may come about, they will not barely make it, but please believe that they will overcome sufficiently. The time of the second coming that God has appointed is still approaching us. It's not far away. In other words, the day where God's purpose will be fulfilled is coming soon. And so the work that we must do today is prepare for the end times, everybody. Harvest can only be done when the crops are ripe. You and I who are living in the end times, we must be the complete, whole, and perfect crops. And that is the homework that we have on this earth. Mark 4, 29 says, But when the crop permits, he immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. However, the chaff that has not become ripe until the end will all be put in fire. But the grain, they will be gathered into the storage house. And God can, even now, put in the sickle for us. But he does not do that because he is waiting. He is enduring for us to become um, perfect grain. He is waiting. If at this moment, at this very moment, God tells us to turn left or right, who can confidently turn right? before God. No matter what time Jesus comes or no matter when the judgment comes, if we don't have the faith to confidently say, I can turn right, then we cannot enter the kingdom of God. In order to be like that, we need to become holy. 
Through what? Through the word and through prayer. It's the only way. It's like the conclusion to the entire Bible becoming holy through the word and through prayer. If we don't live a life of resembling Father, we cannot enter heaven. If we don't become holy, we cannot enter heaven. I will read the word that he gave with this message in Hebrews 10, 12, 25. Not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And then founding pastor said, a believer who dislikes assembling together in the end times is a sick believer. We must conduct ourselves as children of light in these end times. And in 1 Thessalonians 5.8, But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Please believe that we are those uh, of the day. What does Jesus want? He clearly tells us, that he does not any one of us to perish, but to repent and partake in his glory. In Ezekiel 18, verse 32, there's a translation that renders it as, even if a person commits a sin that is worthy of death, God does not want him to die. So you and I, if we say that we believe, even if we've committed grave sin, God does not want us to die. During Noah's flood, God created men, but then he regretted having created men. Because everywhere he went, sin was abundant and overflowing. There was no place without sin. He could not bear it anymore, and he sent the judgment of the flood. Yet the true heart of God was that he did not want anyone to perish. Then, would Father want you and I, the saints of the word, to perish? This is the love of our Father. For you and I who are yearning for the end times, God has given us this message to be on the alert and prepare. Let us remember those words. May we not become the sick believers who dislikes uh, gathering, but may we be on the alert as we are of the day, be sober, and stand confidently before God in the end. This I bless you in the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Our Father, God of love, we thank you. We thank you for giving us life, for giving us breath, so that we can come to the sanctuary where your name is, where your eyes are, where your ears are, that we can come to this church to bow our heads before you, praise you, pray to you, and receive the word. We truly thank you, Father God. When you have given us health, may we be faithful until death while we're healthy. And as we wait for the end, May we not be lazy in giving worship like the wicked, but may we restore and recover the true worship that you desire so that we will have a resolution to the difficult problems that we are facing. With a heart of yearning, with a heart of loving our Father, we have sat here today for our families and our individual lives and for the problems that we're facing in our businesses. We have entrusted them onto you, so we ask that you will um, resolve them. And there are saints who are ailing, even suffering from cancer. We cannot heal ourselves, so we ask that you will send your rays of healing 
And by showing your miracle, although we have not been able to be diligent for your will, until now, we ask that you will once again allow us that opportunity. Please have pity on them. Please heal them. Please give them health. Please allow them the power to gain wealth. And in doing so, may they not have any concerns other than the concerns for the word. Please take away all of our worries in our lives. The rest of the order is also your time. We believe that you will be with us and pray in the name of Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen.